Hey everybody, it's a long time no see. Um, we've been here for about a year now and everyone always asks me, how are your chickens doing? And I apologize for taking so long to do a follow-up video on our chickens. But as you can see from looking at the other videos, we've been very busy. Um, I have to say that, you know, the chickens are doing fine and I have to say that this has been um, an experience to say the least, especially coming from a city girl raising chicks. <laughs> it's definitely a learning experience, but of all our animals, I have to say the chickens are my favorite. Um, so you guys know that I think we started out with seven chicks um, when I did the last video and two of them had died the day of delivery, which is, you know, pretty normal. Um, and I had two others die in an accident, two other, um, chickens die in an accident. So, <laughs> so trying to keep them alive is something else when they're baby chicks. But, um, I was left with three and they're fully grown now and they're laying eggs. So I'm going to introduce you to those chicks. And also I got a new flock in, um, five more chicks, two of them being, um, male. So they'll be roosters. So we also, because we have the additional chicks, um, we extended the chicken coop and made it larger. And we also created a run, which is an outside fence area. Um, I let them roam around on the property, but it was kind of a conflict with letting the dogs out and then letting the chickens out because I couldn't have them both out at the same time. You really have to train your dogs not to bother the chickens because for whatever reason, I guess they think they're toys and they just try to go after them. So um, we had got a new dog and she's only a year old and we're still trying to get her trained to, you know, not mess with the chickens. So that's going to be uh, some time and a the process but until then I still wanted them to have their outside time without having to put the dogs up giving them a couple of hours and vice versa so we created a run that's big enough so that they are fenced in but they don't feel like they're fenced in and they can still roam and do their thing and have their outside time so we built the um, addition to the chicken coop and co created the run I videotaped all of that but of course, that didn't turn out well. What happened was as soon as I got almost done uploading the video, I mistakenly deleted it. So unfortunately, you guys will not be able to see us building the chicken coop and the run. So my apologies, but I will give you guys a tour. So let's go check out, check out the chicks. My husband over here complaining, y'all, saying I leave him out all the videos. <laughs> Knowing he'd be the star of the show of all the videos, but he wants y'all to see his grass, y'all. <laughs> his sprinkler. <laughs> he is so proud of his grass, I swear. He is so proud of his grass, and he should be because he put in a lot of hard work to lay out grassy, uh, get this area cultivated. Yeah, and all his water that he goes get he goes to get to water his grass i carry 20 of these it runs twice a day in the summertime <laughs> each one of these is six gallons that's eight pounds a gallon so that's 48 pounds 50 pounds 20 of them that's a thousand pounds twice a day <laughs> 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 So that I can have some grass. Okay. <laughs> and so my chickens can have something to eat. Those so chickens, look, you see they in their coop. I catch them over here in this grass. Whatever. Chicken, I'm a king. Whatever. You're not cooking my babies. Well, especially if they ain't laying eggs. Whatever. Ain't that right, honey? <laughs> okay, so let me introduce you to my flock so these are the big hands that i had the first time that were baby chicks when you saw them and now they're all grown up so this one right here i call her big mama because she always raises hell when she lays her eggs she just fusses i don't know if it hurts or what but she raises hell so she's a golden lace wyandotte and she lays blue eggs and this one here is a black astrolope and she's all black and the tips of her feathers are 
like an iridescent blue. She's so pretty. But that's ebony and she lays brown eggs. And then this one here is an Easter egger. Or some people call them Americanas. And that's baby and she lays blue eggs. So these five are my new flock. And this one here is a well summer. That's a male. A male. And he's going to be a beautiful rooster. His feathers are like all kind of colors. Reds and purples and blues. So he's a male. And this one right here. That's also a black astrolope. Like my hen. So he's going to be a rooster. They'll look similar. And he also has like an iridescent green and purple tip on his feathers. And then the remaining ones are Easter eggers. So they're not ready to lay eggs yet. They have a few more weeks. See, all of these, the five that I have are about 15 weeks old, give or take. So I still have a few more weeks before the females to start laying eggs. So what do I feed them? Well, they eat their regular feed. Um, this is the brand that I use, Do More. So, um, the smaller chicks, the new flock, they are on a starter feed, and the older ones are on a layer feed. So, they have their regular feed, and I also feed them grass, um, broccoli, broccoli leaves, tomatoes, cucumbers, lettuce, avocados, apples, pineapples. They're spoiled. I try to give them an all-natural diet, so they have a lot of um, food from my garden that I feed them and a lot of um, scraps as far as vegetable scraps because they eat all of that. So um, one thing I do want to point out, well, let me back up. Okay, so one question that I get is how do their eggs taste in comparison to what we buy in the supermarket. And there's a huge difference in the taste of their eggs in comparison to supermarket um, store-bought eggs. I don't care whether they're brown or white or cage-free eggs or so-called grass-fed eggs. To me, all store-bought eggs taste the same. Um, with them, their yolk is a darker orange color and the egg overall just tastes a lot richer and creamier in comparison to those that are sold in the store and again it doesn't matter which brand it is as far as store brought eggs they taste totally different than real farm fresh eggs like these guys um produce um and the reason why is because usually when you buy your uh eggs from the grocery store they're already a month old if not longer and a lot of people don't know that because you have a shipping process. Not only that, but when they lay their eggs, it has a protective coating on it that you can't see. And commercialized eggs, they tend to bleach those eggs down and in their process of cleaning it. And so it takes away that coating, which is why it has to be refrigerated um, for it to stay fresh. When these guys lay eggs, I'll just wipe some of the debris off of it because it's not really messy. And when you just, just do that, you can leave the eggs out for up to uh, 12 days before you have to refrigerate them. So um, their eggs taste a lot fresher and there's no chemical process of cleaning it. And that's the difference between store-bought eggs and having your real farm fresh eggs. And one thing that I want to note um, to all of you, um, because most of us are consumers and most of us fall for the marketing fluff that they put on our products, you know, the whole cage free and grass fed. Well, <clears throat> to kind of help break that down real fast for you guys, um, my chickens, they eat grass, they forage, they eat bugs you know, and some of the other vegetables that I give them. But their primary source of nutrition is their feed. And I don't spend the extra money for organic feed, but I don't buy them garbage feed either. Um, and it makes a difference in their overall health, um, the area, the 
their uh, chicken coop, their run, the fact that they can be out, they're living in a clean area. That what is what makes an overall healthy chicken, which translates to a healthy egg. And, you know, when you read the labels on these packages, when you buy the products from supermarkets, you know, and they say grass fed in your mind, you're thinking that, oh, these chickens just run around on acres and all they eat is grass. <laughs> and that's not necessarily true um, because they need additional food besides just grass to eat. Um, and a lot of times when they say cage free, you know, I suggest that you, you, you do your due diligence and research um, particular brands and find out just how those chickens are being kept because Eglin's Best, for example, they have their chickens in a farmhouse closed in. Those, those chickens are not free range at all. Um, and so, you know, a lot of times we fall for the marketing fluff, but what you do is you just end up spending more money for a chicken that might have had you know, a little bit of outside time. And how does that compare to a chicken that gets none? Well, can you really taste the difference? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Um, and then also you have to think about, you know, if they're grass fed, you have to assume and hope that the farmer is not spraying all kind of fertilizers and chemicals on that grass. Because if he does, well, the whole organic thing just goes right out the window. So don't always fall for the marketing fluff. And, you know, within a month, if you paid attention, we've had like recalls on just about everything from chicken, turkey, beef, um, lettuce, spinach, corn, dog food, you know, and there's a, constant, a common denominator there. Um, and it's a reason why that's happening. So, you know, just do your due diligence and find out where your food really comes from. And don't be so quick to fall for the marketing fluff and think you're getting something better because you spent the extra couple of dollars on it. Because that's not necessarily true. Like I said, um, from having their eggs and from having store-bought eggs, it's a huge difference in taste and quality. And whether you buy white eggs or brown eggs or cage-free eggs, all store-bought eggs taste exactly the same. And they are, they take out those nutrients that are really, you know, for you in the produce. So that's all. I just wanted to kind of break that down for you guys and give you that little bit of um, information. But on to the tour of our chicken coop and the chicken run. Okay, so this is the run that we've attached to the chicken coop. And it's roughly about 500 square feet. And so that allows them plenty of room to roam around, have their fun, do what chickens do without feeling caged up. As you can see, there's no top to it. We just fenced in this area for them. Um, in the summer, I'm going to plant a little garden for them to nibble on and create a sandbox because they like to make dust baths. So I'll do that for them in the summertime. But see, like right here, she's taking her little dust bath. And they just waddle themselves in the dirt. And what I do is I spr sprinkle some dimaceous earth to get rid of any tiny parasites or bugs that may be in the dirt so that they don't get them and they can have them a nice little dust bath. But that's how chickens keep themselves clean. So, yep, so this is the whole run that we've completed for them. And I'm going to show you now the new addition to the chicken coop. Okay, so this is the new addition of the chicken coop that we built. And actually, we connected it to the prior chicken coop. So, this is the inside that we did and we put perches up there for them created a little nesting boxes for them and we connected both of them by making this box area where they can walk through so they have plenty of room between both boxes of the chicken coop 
And if you're wondering why we have this, uh, this fiberglass panel, the ones that we had on our uh, greenhouse, it's because it's winter time. And even though I have cold, hardy chicks, um, it still gets real cold at night and windy. And I wanted to keep them as warm and comfortable as possible during the winter time. So what we did was we enclosed all the uh, open areas that only had the um, chicken wire on it. And we covered that up with the fiberglass sheets and just screwed them around. So I'll walk out here so you can see it. Get a better look. So this has really worked well. And in the summertime, I can unscrew it and take it off. So it's no big deal. But it does its job with keeping them warm in the wintertime. And that's what I wanted. So in the spring... You know, like I said, I'll plant their garden and add some more decorations to the coop and repimp it out like I did before. <laughs> but overall, I am so glad that um, I have our own chickens. Um, our chickens are only for egg production. We will not be eating our chickens. As a matter of fact, the beginning of the year, chicken and turkey will no longer be in our diet. Um, we already don't consume beef or pork so we will only eat fish and vegetables um the reason being the the chickens really have personalities like you see it they really do have their own personalities and they're our pets and i wouldn't dare eat my dog or my cat so i, I can't imagine eating either one of my chickens i just can't and once you have them um, it makes you not want to eat chicken anymore, like seriously. So, yeah, they're only for egg productions. So, with the roosters, um, they will fertilize eggs, of course, which means we probably will have more eggs in production over here, which is fine. Um, when I researched the latest recall, with the dog food, um, I wanted to understand where dog food actually comes from or what they make it out of. And I found out that they use roadkill, diseased animals, skunks, all kind of crap. Um, everything that's not fit for human consumption. So, um, when they start having extra eggs, extra chicks rather, that's fine. Um, I cook every morning and I use at least four eggs a day. So whatever extra eggs we have, we can feed them to the animals. Um, I've already decided to start feeding the animals, um, making them my own food instead of buying dog food. So. My husband's in the background talking a whole lot of smack. <laughs> he's just mad because he's not in this video. <laughs> <laughs> so anywho these are the chicks guys so i just wanted to do a follow-up video for you all to show you how everything is going with them and they're doing beautifully and i'm so happy that we have our chickens so that's all guys until next time be free